answer your question. I think uh, it's a very, very important thing. Um, it's a great question to ask, and it sort of ties into uh, social media impacting the real world, um, and sort of something that we all three uh, spoke about in our opening remarks. Um, there's, there's multiple ways. It's something we, we come across, and, and they're trying to, it's the funny thing is that things have gone online, and now we're trying to take things and make it more accessible uh, offline. So, um, you know, Twitter was created originally because uh, it was based off of SMS text, which means it was the amount of characters you could do uh, on an SMS text, and then also plus your, your handle. So some people could actually do a couple more than, than 140 characters because they had a shorter handle at the time. Um, but we're seeing different platforms now uh, from organizations, um, you know, uh, nonprofits, and uh, from the private sector to try to now bridge back that digital divide and that gap that exists between uh, people that have access. Uh, you know, even in San Francisco, in one municipality, of course, there's areas where folks, uh, they won't have laptops or desktops. Um, uh, they may be able to use smartphones, so you could try to, uh, you know, talk to people and communicate that way. And it's a problem, and it's a, it is a digital divide, because the people who have the least amount of access are probably the people you want to hear from the most about real issues that uh, face your city, or face your state, or face your country. So, um, you know, specific, that's a, a very long conversation, probably on real specific policies that the federal government or statewide government is trying to uh, put into place to, uh, or mechanisms to, to affect um, uh, fixing this problem, but uh, reaching rural areas, uh, broadband, um, uh, trying to, to provide free Wi-Fi. Um, there's a few interesting things that have happened recently where uh, homeless people have been given cell phones uh, in order to, as a means of communication. Um, so uh, I can't really uh, speak to the, in, in and say, and for brevity's sake, about um, all the policies that have gone into place, but to try to create broadband, to try to, to fix this digital divide is, is definitely a very important thing. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Um, let's take uh, qu another question from the floor. Any more questions, guys? <laughs> Any questions? Okay, that gentleman right at the back. Uh, sorry, uh, and understand that America is uh, pretty democratic. So, as far as uh, it comes to tutoring and all that, there's no no laws, you know. But in Malaysia, now we have a PDPA and also MCMC to monitor all the regular tweets, as as well. And in Malaysia, legality system, any tweet that is uh, constructively damaging to a certain person will subject to defamation laws and all that, you know. So does that happen also in the United States, you know? <laughs> For example, like one politician may may may, uh, may de uh, defame you know another person over the Twitter, and the next day another the politician of the other party will start to uh, request for a sorry statement or something you know. So basically, in Malaysia, it's very heavily um, legalized you know. So in America, does that happen also? Yeah, I, I'll speak briefly to that. Um, you know, we do uh, have defamation laws as well, um, but in terms of uh, you know, being able to vocally uh, open up about all sorts of things and talk about other people and issues. Um, I'm sure there, I, I, I don't know enough about uh, your regulatory bodies or, or laws here to speak intelligibly about that. Um, but they did try to uh, pass uh, two laws um, that were known as SOPA and PIPA uh, that were defeated. Um, and the technology sector really did coalesce on a singular platform uh, from a policy standpoint and a political force to sort of defeat that. So, um, and the real reason for that is on a lot of levels, the iteration and change and the innovation and the pace of development that's going on in the technology industry, when I mean, you see it all the time, there's new things happening every second uh, in terms of our, our ability to use technology, um, that same pace is not parallel uh, with our, our legislative process. It takes a lot longer to get laws through. Um, so um, I always tell the story, so, and I actually mentioned it backstage too, San Francisco has you know, a pretty sizable municipal police force um, you know, in terms of the United States. But that said, last year was uh, the first year that the entire department uh, got email citywide. 
So you can see that there's definitely, and, and this is in a city where we have Twitter's worldwide headquarters. So there's definitely a divide in terms of uh, the pace of the private sector, of what's happening in technology and, and the government side. And um, they're starting to bridge that gap. But uh, yeah, I can't speak exactly too, too thoroughly to the uh, Malaysian laws uh, around that. But uh, we're fairly open, I believe, in America on that, on that front. Thank you, Jeremy. <coughs> Any more questions from the floor? Okay, the gentleman, finally from this side. Okay, that gentleman right at the back. Yes. Okay. There were a few people who were skeptical about Twitter being a tool for business, but take a look at the screen right now. That is actually my tweet, and it is basically conquering the whole page for the whole time, for the past yes, five minutes. So I just want to tell you guys that Twitter is a very important tool, but it's constantly being overlooked as you guys keep on mentioning, mentioning about Facebook. I'm just saying this. I'm not uh, asking any questions to the panelists. Sorry. Right. Okay. Uh, I think I, I you have think, a sexy voice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we were talking about Twitter mostly. Uh, you know, we spoke a bit about Facebook. True. There's also YouTube too. Which YouTube is as well. Too. YouTube as well. Instagram maybe. Yeah. Uh, Pinterest as well. Pinterest tag. Pinterest, yeah, tag. <laughs> tag yeah. Um, what's that old one? MySpace. AOL. Friendster. Yeah, I think yeah. shut down. Yeah. SMS. Yeah. SMS. SMS. Yeah. SMS. We still use SMS. Yeah, but they still do. Yeah, yeah, maybe right. the reason why we've talked about Twitter a lot is that, in terms of being able to utilize it from a government standpoint, it's there's no. You don't have to spend anything on it. It's a totally free, open platform that provides quite a lot of assets uh, in terms of um, city impact. So, but but I'm just going to take that that question uh, that that point a bit a bit more seriously. Um, I, I still find that uh, if you want to get a longer imprint on people uh, in Malaysia, at least Facebook is still a, a bit better than Twitter because uh, you can put up more and the amplification or velocity of your message um, can, get, uh, can get to more people uh, than Twitter. Twitter is still, I mean, it's not cutting edge at all, but it's still relatively still uh, new compared to Facebook uh, in, in Malaysia. But I, I prefer Twitter as a medium because it's quicker. But I always have to get um, get it backed up and uh, you know get the same point across on Facebook, which I find to be a bit slower, a bit more difficult to manage, less spontaneous. Um, Twitter allows you that freedom to become more uh, candid and, and quicker in your response and to get uh, 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 you know your finger on the pulse much quicker. If you go to Facebook, you don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening on Facebook. You know everything's everywhere. You know I, I you know tw Twitter. You open up, you open up your your groups and you know exactly what's happening. Um, in, in any given sector that you've chosen to group uh, on Twitter. Thank you, Kairi. Uh, any questions from the floor? Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Samuel. I'm just asking because this panel is all about Gen Y, right? Most of it. Uh, um, I'm just wondering why targeting Gen Y, but not on Gen Z. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, what makes us so special that there is a panel for us? Well, I, if, <laughs> if I can say, I think that it's because, you know, just really briefly, it's, um, we're used to it. We've, we've you know, it's, I don't know if I'm even included. What, what is Gen Y these days? What are we I was going to say it's more <laughs> Gen Y not. Am I included in that? Yeah, I don't even no? know. I don't think so. <laughs> I think about it. I think, right, I, I've lost definition of Gen Y and Gen Y not, you know? I think we're just, I think it's, it's psychographic now, you know? Uh, I think Kyrie is more Gen Y, even though he's 37 years old. That's true. <laughs> Thanks. No, that's, than that's a lot a of good, people in this room. That is a good point. Yeah. It's, it's not it's about, good point it's not about, 37. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not about, um, you know, the exact age group, but it's about uh, people being comfortable uh, with this technology, being used to it, uh, and just understanding it, and just, you know, so it's, You'll meet people who are my father's age who, who ne would never touch it, and then you meet people from my father's age who are totally in tune and, and use all the, the lingo and, and know how to craft the perfect Twitter message and, and everything, use it very effectively. So um, I think it's just it's how each individual engages with the technology. 
Any more questions from the floor? Okay, let me ask Kyrie and Jason Lu as, uh, as a politician and a personality. Jason, do you have a different persona when you're in, uh, in person as well as a social media persona? Are you different between the two? Sorry. I'm, I'm pretty much the same. What you see is what you get. Hello, Mr. Chairman. I thought, how are you, sir? Yes. Um, uh, I think that, that I like to be honest when I talk on Twitter, when I speak on Twitter. Uh, hence, I don't say things like, how are you guys doing? Hey, you know, we, you know I, don't, I, I, I speak to you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so I think when you use the language, I think just to reiterate what Kyra was saying before, when you speak on social media, you decide whether you think you're talking to 10 million people or to one person uh, who may be following you. And if you, if you speak in that language one-to-one, -one, you're then having a one-to-one -one communication with that person. I mean, I was a DJ on hits, and you know, we were taught always, never say, hey, how's it going out there? I mean, who walks up to a guy in a shopping center, hey, Bill, how's it going over there? How's it going out there? Hey, you know? You, you, it, you try to keep it real. You try to say, how are you doing? Hey, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? So you're having a conversation. It's actually a lot, it's actually a lot more simple. I know today we've been trying to break things down, but it's actually really a simple piece of communication that you're trying to have with a person one-on-one. -on -one. And a group will pick that up and, and try, to, try to, I think, uh, engage you on that, that level. But I, I try to be very much the person, you know, the person I am is, you know, cheeky, quirky, try to save you money uh, on your phone bills regularly. Uh, try to fight for the development and innovation of the, uh, the Malaysian communication sector and, and, and uh, give a reason for companies like, uh, you know, Maxis and, and Digi to keep their rates down to challenge us. Thank you very much. I, you know, I, I've, I've, I've known Jason for uh, the last 25 years. We're actually best friends. We're best men at each other's wedding. Um, but today, for the first time, I mean, that was the biggest BS I've heard from him in my life. I mean, have we, have, we got a, have we got a camera here? Can you zoom in on me? Can you zoom in on me? Here's a camera. He said that he's the same person. Where's the camera? The camera's there. He said he's the same person on Twitter as he is in real life. This is his t Twitter display photo avatar. This, this, right there. Uh, yeah. That is Jason Lowe's Twitter avatar. Are you trying to tell Touché, me that? Touché. Are you trying to tell me that that's your body? <laughs> same guy, but same. I, mean, I need to do a few push-ups. So give me a few hours. I, I can get there. So, so, so much for being real on Twitter. You know, I told you stop using my body for your display picture. It's it's white, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah obviously, you photoshopped it. Obviously. So anyway, um, yeah. Uh, Coming back to the question, uh, it, it's problematic because uh, I tried to be as much uh, my, myself as I am in real life as on Twitter. And I think it's a nightmare for people who work with me because um, I, I'm too candid sometimes and the language, the choice of language uh, that I use can be uh, non-statesman-like. Um, so, it, it, uh, so I have to hold back a bit, not hold back as in change my personality, uh, but sanitize a bit uh, sometimes my reaction. I would not necessarily tweet my first reaction to something. Uh, I'm not tweeting a lie, but I'm, I'm tweeting something that is more considered. Uh, that, I must admit, but as far as my interests, as far as the non-political tweets are concerned, I try to make that as, as, uh, as close to, to me as, as possible. I think we're all fed up of hearing about Manchester United on your tweet, by Sorry? the way. Who is fed up of hearing about Manchester United on Kyrie's tweet? Not, not many, so it just me? that, that question didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any more questions from the floor? Well, can, I, can I add to that real quick? I just think, it, I think it's pretty obvious when, I think you can tell when there's a politician's press team handling what's going out versus the politicians themselves. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, any more questions from the floor? Okay, the gentleman um, at the back. Hi guys, um, just a quick one. I think social media and politics can be particularly unforgiving. So I think corporate organizations can learn a lot about crisis management when it comes to um, how to engage or when to engage or rather when not to engage. So maybe if you can give us a bit of an idea of the criteria that you use in deciding when to engage in a crisis and when not to. Go. 
from the public sector. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's quite broad, I think. It really depends on, on the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the context, I think. Uh, if, if it's something extremely serious, like you know, a, a, a car crash, a train wreck, a plane crash, whatever, uh, I think you need to be somewhat subdued in your responses. I think if you're, if you're handling things like, like death or uh, uh, you know, other, a serious thing like, uh, uh, for instance, something that could trigger uh, uh, a world, uh, 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 people moving in a mosh pit to, to, a, to a shopping center or, or a stampede, you have to be careful about what the context is. So it really, really depends on, on, on the, the instance. Um, but having said that, a lot of companies actually do do try to handle crisis very well. There's a lot of tools out there. You know, we have uh, customer force and sales force and doing all sorts of amazing things with, uh, with Twitter that, that you, can, you can gauge the sentiment before it even happens. Uh, and then you manage crises very, very fast uh, by engaging, 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 and, and, uh, and reacting very quickly. Uh, it's, it's no secret that most people get most things done if they bypass customer care and go straight to the CEO on Twitter, you know? Dear so-and-so, uh, I used your broadband and it's very expensive. And you, you, you know, if you can find them on Twitter, they would prob you'd probably get a reaction. But I don't think you can find most of them on Twitter. But two talk is on Twitter. Uh, and so am I. If you have a problem with your mobile phone, just give me a call. Hard sell, hard sell. So I think really it's a question of you know, who you can reach and what the scenario is. Uh, I don't think there's any one kind of straight answer for it, to be honest. Harry, do you want to add to that question? Um, yeah, just very quickly. I think the, the specific question was crisis, in the moment of a crisis or when there's a, there's a hot issue that you need to address. I think you should engage, obviously you should engage because um, the whole nature of social media is transparency and you want to get as much information out there as possible, especially if you're a government. Um, but the cardinal principle is you shouldn't get ahead of yourself. If you try and engage with people, and try and um, portray the situation before you've actually resolved the situation, um, then, as I said before, you're going to get called out on it. You must make sure that you don't get ahead of yourself when you're engaging with people. And it's very easy to get carried away in saying that we've done this already, we've done this already, when actually you've not done it yet. So um, social media lends itself and seduces the person on social media to become more than what he is, or he or she is. Especially when you are a government or a position of authority, you want to show that you know I've done this and I'm reaching out to you, and you know I've already taken care of this problem. So it's very important that uh, when you engage, you engage with what you have and not with what you you haven't done yet. So you know it's very important to just stay on track and on message. Jeremy, do you want to add to that question? Yeah, as well? I think um, I think you said it uh, fantastic. You have to be very thoughtful, and um, I don't think you 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 know sometimes it's better to to wait and sort of see how things play out. Um, but I, I do agree on social media. You, you know, especially you know, as an elected official in your capacity, you have to engage on some level. Um, and I think just think you know to do that effectively and not reactionary is probably the best way. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, any more questions? For, okay, go ahead. There's a mic behind you, sir. I don't know. There. <laughs> In the context of a personal brand, what mix would you say should be? In the pro say, for example, between posts and tweets or Facebook posts, what mix would you say should be personal, and what mix mix should be more on the on the business side, not sales, but at least on the business side relating to the profession or the the aspect of what the personal brand relates to? I would just say I think um, you know as long as it's if if it's going to be about something personal, it should just always be positive. Uh, Mix-wise, as far as political communication is concerned, I think um, you know a 70-30 mix is quite good. 70% work, 30% um, mix it up with some personal, uh, um, candid uh, personality tweets. Um, but the other mistake that I think a lot of um, people engaged in social media and politics make is when an institutional entity on social media tries to become personal. 
Uh, when you have, uh, just as an example, I'm not saying that this actually happened, when you have the Ministry of Finance saying how good a movie Argo was, that's a little weird because, you know, you can't, I can't imagine the Ministry of Finance watching a movie. Um, so a lot of institutions, I, I don't know if you can talk, <laughs> but uh, a lot of institutions and companies try to have a personality uh, which is, could be a bit disturbing. I know you want to make the language a bit more personable, uh, but don't turn an institution or a company into a person. If you want to get a person out there, get your CEO out there, get your minister out there, uh, get the head of your agency out there, uh, because people don't really want to talk on a personal uh, level to an institution. I agree with Kyrie, uh, but going back to the, the per your personality of your brand, it is a personal decision whether or not you want to let more of yourself out there. What I tend to not like seeing is, uh, oh my God, I hate you, you're such a, you know, whatever, whatever, on Twitter or on Facebook or whatever it is, you know? And you only have hear one side of the conversation, you know? And, and you realize they're having a personal fight. You know, boyfriend and girlfriend having a fight on Twitter. It doesn't matter if she's a brand or, or whatever. I, I, she just lost me, you know? I, and I, I was following her. You know, and sometimes I don't know what, I don't also want to know what's stuck in your teeth, you know? I, I've seen a tweet, oh, I got, I got something tell I need to pass motion, stuff like that. It's like, yeah, there's a level of personal, <laughs> you know, personal, uh, it, it really depends, I, I suppose, on your social graces in the first place. Uh, so it's a personal decision, but I'd, I'd, go, I'd go a bit further than Kyrie. I'd say, you know, kind of 50, 50, 50, you know, 50, 50 percent is, is, is work and 50 percent is play uh, in my book, I guess. Uh, Jason, like you, you handled uh, Tune Talk um, brand and yourself on Twitter as well. How do you balance the two between managing your own Twitter account and managing Tune Talk account? And how do you make it conversational? How do you make the brand relatable to the public? Well, I think it, at, in, in Tune Group we follow a different kind of uh, mentality where <laughs> the CEO often, very often the brand are interchangeable. Uh, I didn't want that poster of me on the highway, okay? Tony Fernandez said, it's time you got a poster on the highway. And he said in front of my marketing team, my marketing team said, you know, we should do it. So sometimes your brand and your personality are interchangeable. But I like to lend myself to that because I like to think that, you know, I'm a fun guy, outgoing. Uh, sociable, engaging, and I want Tune Talk to be that. If I was a creepy guy, you know, I probably wouldn't want that as much for my brand. So it depends on really how much confidence you have to instill part of your personality in your brand. The danger, of course, is if I ever get sacked and some other, guy, some other person comes in and takes over, uh, they then have this issue uh, where the brand and, the, and, and the, the CEO, the CEO is essentially the custodian of the brand. Yeah, and, and some, as you see, some companies go the Richard Branson way where Virgin and Richard Branson are kind of interchangeable brands with, within each other. And some people go the other way where it's much more of a corporate identity versus a person who's just, who's just running the thing. So our, our choice at Tutal was to do that, or rather my choice was to actually, actually do that. In a sense, also, it, it made us stand out from, from the rest of the, of the telco service providers. Jeremy, do you have anything to add in terms of branding um, as in the context of United States? Yeah, I think um, I would just echo uh, what's, what's already been said essentially that um, you have to be consistent, as you pointed out uh, at the beginning of this talk. And um, you, know, you, have to, you have to pick and choose the moments. Um, but I think it's different too in politics, you know, because if you're, uh, you know, for example, as I pointed out earlier, I don't have a Twitter handle, you know. So, that, that probably shows you right there uh, how cautious and, and thoughtful you have to be about uh, using these tools that, you know, these instruments that we have at our fingertips. Um, I think that's, that's what I would say. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, any more questions from the floor? Any more questions? No religious questions? <laughs> Just joking. Around 50% generally, most people who actually join a network uh, are very pleased that they do save 50% on their, on their mobile bills. Because generally in Malaysia, we do pay some of the highest rates in the world. There are some people from the Multimedia Commission here today uh, who may or may not agree with me, but uh, we, we do tend to pay a, a lot in this country because, uh, because I think as, as consumers, we don't empower ourselves. Uh, we don't have uh, really uh, active uh, watchdogs like they do in the UK or perhaps in the US. Uh, 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 ours are probably a little less engaging. They're coming up, 
but uh, uh, generally, you know, we, we fight, we're, we're fighting in a, in a Red Sea, but uh, we're, we're, we're doing okay. No complaints. But yes, if you, want to, if you want to change, see me outside. I'll sort you out. To just meet each other outside or tweet to each other. <laughs> Any more questions from the floor? Yes, go ahead. Hi, Jason, it's me again. Max's girl? Hi. No, DG, DG. Sorry, DG girl. Um, ex DG girl. Ex -DG uh, because girl. the thing is, right, um, the reason why DG doesn't compete with you is, th is that um, DG actually convert um, their prepaid malls to the postpaid line and customers. So that's why you don't really get a competition in your postpaid market now. So the thing is, um, well, you're the only one person now probably doing just prepaid, right? So that's why, um, what is the differentiating factor besides you being very, very cheap and all? Because the thing is, right, if you actually go to postpaid and you pay the 30 ringgit thing also, you also become very, very cheap as well. That's where DG Direction is. Sure. So question is, how is TuneTalk going to beat that? Every time you top up on TuneTalk, we give you points. These points never expire. Every oh. single person in tune to have points. We have 300 million points in the market. You can just call our customer care and say, I want to go to Penang. If you top up 100 ringgit, we give you 240 points. You can fly anywhere in Malaysia for 2,000 points. You can fly to the Gold Coast for 8,000 points. When's the last time DG gave you a flight ticket for free? Never. Ugh. Plus, we also get you into the front row of all the concerts that we do, which include Avenged Sevenfold, Justin Bieber, Deftones, you name it, we do all these things, and we also get, we're also going to allow you to interchange points for devices. When's the last time did you give you a free handphone? I don't know. But you know, that's just a few of the things that we have out the back of us. But uh, don't worry about it too much. And this conference is proudly brought to you by Tune Talk. That's right. <laughs> See the logo. Where are them? Yeah, there's a logo up there. It's over there, Jason. Actually, it's presents a battle of the you bands. You can see it. I mean, it's very. It's